This video will give a proof of Rolle's theorem and then use Rolle's theorem to prove the more general mean value theorem. Imagine that we have a function defined on the interval AB such that f of x is continuous on the closed interval, differentiable on its interior, and such that f of a is equal to f of b. We want to prove that there's a number c in the interval a, b, such that the derivative of f at c is zero. Let's consider three cases. Case one is that the function is a constant. Case two is that the function rises above its value at the endpoints somewhere in that interval. And case three is that the function drops below its value at the endpoints somewhere in that interval. Now a function could possibly both rise above and fall below, but every function that satisfies the conditions of Rolle's theorem has to fall into at least one of these three cases. If it doesn't rise above and it doesn't rise below, it definitely is constant. In case one, it's easy to find a number c so that the derivative f prime of c is zero. In fact, any c in the interior a, b works since f prime of x for a constant function is zero everywhere. In case two, pick c such that f of c is a maximum, an absolute maximum for f. f has to have an absolute maximum since it's a continuous function defined on a closed interval. And since we've assumed the function rises above its endpoint values somewhere in the interval, we know that c is not an endpoint. So c has to be on the interior, which means that f has not only an absolute maximum at c, but also a local maximum. Therefore, c is a critical number, and since f prime has to exist by assumption, f prime of c must be zero. We found the number we're looking for. Case three is very similar. We just need to pick a c such that f of c is an absolute minimum value for f. The same argument then shows that c is a critical number in the interior, and so f prime of c has to be zero. And that concludes the proof of Rolle's theorem. A clue for how to prove the mean value theorem comes from drawing a picture. We're looking for a point where the tangent line has the same slope as the secant line. And based on the picture, it looks like that point occurs at a place where the vertical distance between the function and the secant line is at a maximum. So let's try to write down a formula for that vertical distance and see where that takes us. First, an equation for the secant line is given by y minus f of a is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a times x minus a. That's because the slope of the secant line is f of b minus f of a over b minus a, and a point on the secant line is the point a f of a. So this equation is just the point-slope form of a line with the slope through that point. We can rewrite this equation for the secant line by solving for y. And now the vertical distance between the function and the secant line is just f of x minus the y values on the secant line. I'll call this vertical distance v of x. It's a function of x, which point in this interval you're calculating the vertical distance at. Now here's the cool idea. We can apply Rolle's theorem to this new function v of x. v of x is certainly continuous and differentiable because it's just a sum of differentiable functions f of x, x minus a, and here we're just multiplying by a constant. 
Also, when we check what V of A is, we get F of A minus this quantity, where I've just plugged in A for X everywhere. But notice that the A minus A cancels out to zero, and the F of A cancels with the subtracted F of A, so V of A is actually just zero. If I calculate V of B, again, just plugging in B for X, I get F of B minus this quantity. Now my B minus A is cancel, so now I'm getting F of B minus F of A minus F of B plus F of A, which again is just zero. Since V of A equals V of B, by Rolle's theorem, V prime of C equals zero for some C in the interval AB. Let's see what this means in terms of the original equation for V of X. V prime of X is going to equal F prime of X minus derivative of f of a is just zero. This is just a constant multiple. So I'm going to get f of b minus f of a over b minus a times the derivative of x minus a is just one. So for that lucky value of c, we have zero is equal to v prime of c, which is plugging in c for x, f prime of c minus f of b minus f of a over b minus a. If I simply rearrange this equation, I get that f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. That is, there's a value of c in the interval a, b, such that the derivative of f at c is equal to the average rate of change of f. And that's exactly the conclusion of the mean value theorem. That concludes our proof of the mean value theorem.